All right, we're going to be looking at the basics of DNA structure. And you should recognize this molecule up in the top right here as the famous double helix. It's, a, it's like a, a ladder. If you take a ladder and you twist it, we're going to be building one of these models in class. It's quite interesting. Uh, basically, we need to understand what the importance of DNA is. And it's just so cool and interesting. And when we talk about genetics, you're going to find out this is the stuff of life. Everything that is living is bound by this exact same genetic code. For now, let's just stick to the structure of it and how to represent it. Uh, basically, your body here is made up of over 80 trillion cells, roughly. And if you counted each cell one at a time, each cell taking one second, it would take you how many years? It would take you 2.5 uh, million years to count to that number there 2.5 million years you don't need to remember that but i just wanted to write it um everything all the blueprints are contained in the dna and it's going to be quite tricky to wrap your head around how everything can be coded in your dna using only four of these famous letters a t c and g but we're going to be seeing that a, a little bit later uh, dna is a macromolecule and it's a big molecule like other big molecules and like other big molecules it's made up of smaller molecules or subunits for example polysaccharides or carbohydrates are made up of small units called monosaccharides Big proteins are made up of small units called amino acids, and DNA is a nucleic acid, and nucleic acids are made up of small units called nucleotides, all right? And uh, we're gonna learn how to draw a basic structure of a, a nucleotide is pretty easy to draw. You just need three shapes right here. There's a little circle, uh, you've got a little pentagon, and then you can put a little rectangle. So this is what a nucleotide is. A nucleotide has these three basic parts to it. So as long as you can draw this, you're, you'll be fine. So what are these basic parts actually called? So this little circle here, uh, what's the best way to do this? Okay, I'll try to draw a line, but let's not get confused. So this is a phosphate molecule. This is a ribose-shaped sugar. If we're talking about DNA, then this is deoxyribose, but let's just call this ribose sugar for now and this rectangle over here is actually a base and that base can be one of four different letters for now i'll put a t c or g i'm really busy right now i'm in the middle of something continuing on uh you're gonna find out what these letters actually represent in a little bit shall i give you the names of these okay for now a stands for adenine T stands for thymine, C stands for cytosine, and G stands for guanine. It's a good idea to know these names. There's one more base you'll learn about later, but let's save that uh, for when we actually talk about that process. So you can see if you actually go to Google Images and type in a nucleotide or type in any of these names here, you're going to get some pretty complex looking uh, chemical formulas and structures. That's why you're going to be relieved that knowing how to draw this general shape right here uh, with a circle, a pentagon, or a rectangle is good enough to represent the structure of DNA for now. So phosphate, ribose sugar, base. If it's DNA, if it's DNA, maybe you should know this, the D actually stands for deoxyribose. Deoxyribose. What that means is in DNA, the ribose sugar here is actually missing one oxygen, so therefore it's called deoxy, removing one oxygen atom there. So that's uh, a good start right now for nucleotides. Uh, the base region is variable and can, can consist of four different bases. I've just mentioned that right here. So this rectangular bit here is called the base region, and it's made up of these four. It could be one of those four bases. Now when we draw, this is you can consider this one little Lego unit here. This is one little Lego unit. When we combine a bunch of them together, you should be able to see how it starts to look like DNA. And we're going to do that next. Okay, a DNA molecule consists of two strands of nucleotides. I mentioned before that it kind of looks like a ladder. Uh, but you take this ladder and you twist it up. It's hard to represent here. You end up with something that looks something like this. All right, with all the ladder strands 
in between, but let's see how we draw that using our method that we were talking about earlier. So these two strands, so you can think of it as one strand here and another strand here, they actually run, and maybe you've never heard this word before, you've heard of parallel, but what about anti-parallel? Anti-parallel basically means the two strands are parallel, but they run in opposite directions, and we're going to see how this makes sense later. Uh, the two strands are connected by, and are the, they're connected by hydrogen bonds, and we've talked about hydrogen bonds. They've been very important in many of the things we've been talking about with uh, the properties of water uh, that will link up between the bases. And using the basic structure of a nucleotide, this asks us to try to draw a diagram of what a section of DNA looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. Let me start with one Lego unit. Do you remember how to draw this? Boom, 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 just like that. I'm going to draw another one underneath because what, are, what good are Legos if you cannot try to stack them up? And I'm going to draw one more underneath here just like this. And believe it or not, this is exactly how this actually starts to link up. A bond gets formed here and a bond gets formed here, and now this is already one strand. Think of this as one of these lines, like this line over here. Now we have to draw another one. The trick to doing this is, if you're actually doing it on an exam, um, is to turn your paper, not upside down, rotate your paper uh, 180 degrees. So the bottom of the paper is now facing away from you, and the top of the paper is now towards you and you're just going to draw the exact same thing but lined up the other way so what this means is that this is actually quite hard to tr just try to do normally so it's a good idea to flip this around because this makes a big difference here is you'll end up with something that looks like this so if you flip the paper around notice the pentagons are upside down they're upside down with the pointy part and this is very very important especially when we get into the higher level portion of this. So that's it. And if it joins up here, you get like this. If it joins up here, you get like this. We've almost completed a section of DNA. Last thing you need to know is that of those four bases, A's, T's, C's, and G's, A and T form two hydrogen bonds between each other. Um, how I remember that is, well, let's write this one first. C and G form three hydrogen bonds. A and T are letters that are made from straight lines. So this is kind of stupid, but it helps me. Straight lines, so I think only in two dimensions. Only in two dimensions. So that's why A and T form two hydrogen bonds in between. Okay, this gets even stupider. C and G are curvy, and so you start thinking spherical, sphere goes... A sphere is a three-dimensional shape, so I think 3D, three-dimensional shape because of their, their curves, and so I get three hydrogen bonds. So what does that mean? So I've, if I'm going to label all this stuff, I would label this as phosphate. I'd label this as the uh, deoxyribose sugar. This would be a base, but I, this could be A. Uh, let's just write some letters here. This could be C, and this could be T. Well, a and T actually bind together. So if I see an A on this side, this side has got to be a T. If I see a C on this side, this has got to be a G. If this is a T on this side, this has got to be an A. It's a rule. A and T bind together. We find this in the DNA of every living organism, whether you're a slug or an alligator or dinosaur or butterfly or a fancy human or Michael Jackson. Between A and T, Remember, two hydrogen bonds. I'm going to use a dotted line to represent that. Two hydrogen bonds. C and G has three hydrogen bonds. And T and A have two hydrogen bonds. And I have now just drawn a structure, a section of DNA. I would label everything, and it would make me happy. This, If you can draw this, this satisfies the standard level requirements for understanding the structure of DNA. In a later video, we'll get into some of the higher level details and actually uh, categorize these bases into two different categories, add a few extra bits here and there. But you can actually start to see that this is kind of like a, a zipper. You can almost, uh, almost cut down here and separate these two strands into a left strand and a right strand. This is going to be very important for a few new processes we're going to find out when we actually talk about exactly how do we use DNA to do all this stuff that we call life. All right.
See you next time. Post the question. <laughs>